Hello everyone, welcome to this episode where we're going to be working with character animations now. Now, when I say character animations, I'm not talking about anything super fancy at the moment. Our sprite characters can't really do much. Uh, basically, all they have are images, so the most we can do is just change, like position, rotation, maybe colors and what have you, uh, but we've already got functions in place for that. So, animations that I'm talking about are going to be specifically for the root object of the character that could be applied to any character type, meaning your sprite characters, your live 2D, and your 3D models alike. Now, we'll be able to create sub-animator controllers for controlling like the animations of a 3D model character. They can have much more than a regular, uh, what do you call it, a sprite character, because they've actually got bones, they've got blend shapes, they've got so much more you can do. And same with Live 2D. But what we're working on today is going to be universal animations strictly for their root objects to give them basic movements like hopping, shaking, uh, whatever else you might imagine. So one thing you'll notice is that I have two new tabs down here, animation and animator. Let me just go ahead and close those out real quick. Uh, so for us to work with animations, this is not an animation tutorial. Please understand that right now. If you want to learn Unity animation, go watch a video on that. Uh, I'm not going to take the time to go over that, but I will show the process. So let's open up our, those animation panes to allow us to actually make the animations and apply them to the characters. This is going to be under the animation bar here, and we want to open animation and animator. So I'll take animation down to the bottom tab and open up animation or the animator in the middle tab there. Actually, I'll take that one to the bottom as well. So for us to get started on the animations, let's first click the object that we want to animate. And we've already got an animator component attached to the anim object of our characters. We've got that object on every single character that we've made so far. We just don't have any animations attached. So if we have our animation tab open, let's click create. And inside of main, how about we make a new folder for animations? And inside of there, let's make a subfolder for characters. And inside of there, I'll make a new folder called root animations. And this first animation we're going to work with, very simple, it's just going to be a hop animation. So I'll save that, and then what I like to do is tick this auto record button, so all I have to do is move the object in the scene, and it'll record the keyframes for me. Now you want to make sure you're using the Rec Transform tool. Since everything we're working with is UI based, we don't want to work with world positions, so we want to work with Rect Transform coordinates here. And if I drag this character on the screen, you'll notice that it starts recording the character, so I'll just make sure that her top and bottom is set to zero, so she's at the starting position. And then at about 15, I'm going to drag her up to maybe that number there. I'll copy the first keyframe and paste that at the end. So if we play that, then we have a slow uh, hop. So let me first uh, drag this down and give ourselves a faster movement. Okay, cool. So that might work for hop. Now let's make a new clip. And this one is going to be something equally simple, just called Shiver. And Shiver is just going to make the character shake from side to side. So I'm going to move on the x-axis, make sure she is centered where she needs to be. And then maybe three frames in, I will move her to the negative five position. Then six frames in, back to the original. Nine frames in, we'll go to positive five. And then 12 frames back to the, uh, if I can paste that other one, come on now, copy. And uh, all sorts of wrong keys. So if we play that, then what we get is a little shaking animation for our character. Maybe we'll make that slightly faster. So we'll go increments of two instead of three. That looks like that'll work. And here's a nice little tip for you. If you, if you select all the keyframes, you get these two bars at the bottom here. If you just drag one of those bars, then you can space out all the keyframes evenly to however you want to position them. I forgot to do that a second ago. So that's why I did them manually, but that's there and it's a nice little feature. So shiver and hop work. So if we open our animator, these should already be linked in because we created them on the animator that we just created. If you look at the anim attached to Stella, it now has a controller where previously it didn't. Let me just take myself out of edit keyframe mode there. 
and we have this animator now. And if we go to the project and we click anim, it's a newly created controller inside of the root animations folder where we created our first animations. But that's not actually linked to the prefabs, so let's go ahead and go to the prefab edit and make sure that the animator has that controller set for all of our characters. That's already set for Stella, so we're good there. But then Raylene needs it. And the guard needs it. Okay, so now they can all share these animations that I've just created. And since it's on the anim child of the root object for the character, then we can move the character anywhere on the scene and the animations will still move correctly. So in our animator component, now let's go ahead and make some parameters to actually trigger these animations. Uh, not a layer. I don't want a new layer. I want parameters. First one's going to be a trigger, which I'll call hop. Whenever this is triggered, we'll go ahead and make sure that hop is triggered. Uh, let's make a transition to hop and then select that transition and make sure that the condition set is using the hop trigger. And then let's make a boolean and this one's going to be called shiver. I'm just naming it the name of the animation. And shiver, when I tick that to true, I want that to loop this animation. And then once it's false, I want it to exit out and go back to the default position of the character. Which, speaking of default position, we should actually make one for the character. So let's select that animator again, and let's go ahead and create a new clip and call this default. And so default is going to be at the default position. Let's make sure that's set for both X and Y. And I'll copy that keyframe and then just paste that further down the line. So now we've got default. So I'm going to right click that, set that as the layer default state. So that's what we enter in as. And here's where we want to set our transition for shiver. So move from any state to shiver and make sure that the condition there is set to shiver as long as it's true. And then we'll exit from shiver back to default if our shiver boolean becomes false. And we'll exit from hop back to default whenever we end. So we want it to have an exit time, but we don't want to have a transition duration because it should be instant. Let's instead change the exit time to one, that way it exits at the end of the animation. And then from any state which goes into hop, this also has a transition duration, which could last longer than the animation itself, which would wind up giving us double at the animation. So let's cancel that out and make sure transition duration is zero. Uh, I'll leave that for shiver because that one's going to be a looping animation, so it's not going to have a set exit point. Uh, but now let's just go ahead and see what this looks like in the scene. I've went ahead and disabled the character testing object here. That way Stella's going to be the only one on screen and I can see what these animations will look like. So first off, let's go ahead and tick hop. So there we go, she hops, and if we tick shiver, then she does shiver. If I uncheck it, then she goes to default. But one thing you'll notice is if I have Shiver on, it's constantly triggering Shiver, which doesn't really seem like a problem. But I'm going to go ahead and set another trigger that will cause a refresh state for these booleans and whatever sort of other things we might change. Because for trigger, it's going to be a one a one action thing. So if I trigger something, it's only going to hit once. Whereas I, if I have a boolean, it's constantly going to evaluate that as true, which is why we have this here. So let's go ahead and close this out and give ourselves a third second trigger called refresh. And then on shiver, we're only going to transition there if we set shiver to true and we refresh it. Which means now, if I go ahead and hit shiver, nothing's going to happen until I hit refresh and now we're there, and now I uncheck Shiver, and we're back to default. Cool, so now let's link this up to our actual character class. Okay, so we need to make a function that will allow us to start an animation on this character. So let's make ourselves a public void called anim. Uh, let's just go ahead and call it animate, just to be full and consistent. Just to give it the full proper name, so 
Now let's take the name of the animation that we want to trigger. So if we only provide a name, then this is just going to be a trigger, and we don't need to worry about anything else. But we also got a boolean, so I'm going to duplicate this function so that we have way we have another one of another type that we can run. And this one will require a boolean for the state. And so if we only have an animation that we're triggering, then let's call trigger animation. Otherwise, we're going to call animator.setBool to the animation, that name, and then we're going to set the state of that animation to the state that we've passed in. And of course, when working with our booleans, we'll want to make sure that we set the trigger for that refresh state as well. So animator.setTrigger, and we're going to specify the refresh state. And of course, it's not good to have this hard-coded down here, so let's cut that out and head up to the top and make ourselves a constant. So I'm going to make a public constant string called the animation refresh trigger and set that equal to refresh. And then down at the bottom, I'll go ahead and say animation refresh trigger. And now in test characters, I've got a little conversation going here between Stella and Raylene. It's about this wind chill that came out of nowhere. So that'll be something to give our characters something to hop and shiver about. So Stella asks, where did this wind chill come from? So she's surprised. So at this point, I'm going to say Stella.animate. And we'll go ahead and say hop. But the name of that animation actually has a capital H to it. And then Raylene, she's going to start shivering at this point. So Raylene.animate shiver, and I'll set that to true. And then after it's over with, Raylene is then going to stop shivering. So we'll set that to false. And now I've reactivated our testing script, so let's go ahead and play this in the scene and see what happens. So I actually have an error or a warning here saying the animator is not playing an animator controller, which means that, yeah, if I look over at the controller, it's actually missing the animator. Does Raylene have hers? Raylene does, so for some reason Stella did not receive her animator component. Let me just go into her prefab and look at anim. Oh, it's listed there. That's kind of interesting. So that's very interesting. Whenever I'm spawning Stella and Stella alone, it's removing her animator from her prefab, which is quite strange. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into resources and Stella and I'm going to delete her prefab and just make sure animator is still attached and then I'm going to recreate her prefab. Um, actually, I need that prefab. Ugh. Okay, I'm gonna make her active and then recreate her prefab and set her to inactive again. Let's go ahead and save and let's try this again. I'll go ahead and pause real quick, take a look at Stella. Yeah, okay, so something was just weird with her prefab. It was It was showing that it was attached, but whenever she spawned it wasn't so if you have ish weird issues with your prefabs just go ahead and recreate them um, basic Raytheon reset protocol right there okay so she hops and that worked fine went back to default so Raylene should start shaking and indeed she does and then Stella's going to say it's over and Raylene should stop shivering which she did perfect and that's the basics for animations on the roots of our characters. So any animations that we make in this style can be applied to any character type, even our 3D models and our live 2Ds, if you would want to animate them in that same consistent way. Obviously, they'll have their own animators. This is not the extent of animations, but this is the basic animation for all characters. 
So as we get into live 2D and 3D models, we'll make their own animators and we'll give them much finer controls and more capabilities. But until then, that's all, and I'll see you in the next video.